to another edition of Infield Fly, talking baseball with you, baseball fans, talking baseball. And uh, we're going to talk about what's happened in the last week of Major League Baseball, what's coming up in the next week of Major League Baseball as well. There are a lot of big stories. There are a lot of things cooking, a lot of things happening. I'm Rob Fisher. I'm a Cardinals fan. There's a <laughs> lot cooking and a lot happening. A lot. None of it's good, but, but there's a lot happening. Uh, we'll get into that. Keith Murphy's here. He's a Chicago Cubs fan. The Cubs, they're right there. They're right there. Right there, baby. Right, right there, there with the Milwaukee Brewers. Half, half a game right there, baby. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Lang Whitaker, Atlanta Braves fan. They're right there with Philadelphia. Philadelphia's giving them a run. Philadelphia's giving them a run, but the Braves are doing fine. You have a lot of season left, guys. Yeah. A lot of season. A lot of, just keep winning series. Just, just win. Just keep win winning series. series. That's right. Uh, but, of course, today I wear my – uh, old school Pittsburgh Pirates jersey um, to celebrate what we all celebrate uh, as baseball fans on Saturday, which was Paul Skeen's day, uh, <laughs> as he made his debut for the Pittsburgh Pirates, wearing number 30 for the Buccos, the number one pick in the draft from LSU. Uh, he's 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 dating the the what's her name Lily yes, Lily yes. Uh, gymnastics Nunn? Yes, is yes. that her name? I, um, so. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, the gymnastics girl. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful romance. It's kind of like Kelsey and Taylor. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, uh, with these two and he's making his debut. And of course he had to make it against the Chicago Cubs. Uh, so the Cubs, uh, they, they came in and, and they take on the pirates and it was Paul Skeen's day, the most anticipated debut of a big league starter since Steven Strasburg. Yes. Yes. And he, he did not disappoint. Biggest from before that was Mark Pryor, former Chicago Cubs. Mm. I remember watching both of those because I, I really liked Mark Pryor. Mark Pryor was one of my favorite pitchers of all time to watch. And I remember watching mm. Strasburg because there was so much hype around Steven Strasburg. Yeah. So then now you got Paul Skeens. Did everybody celebrate accordingly on Saturday? I, I did not celebrate. I wanted us to just to beat the man's brains in. That's about it. Well. He kind of did. He almost did. Yeah. 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 Um, Lang, did you I didn't celebrate? Watch. You didn't no. celebrate. My son's playing in a golf league and it's like ruined all, every Saturday for the next two months. <laughs> oh, well, that's really sense. tough for me to do anything on Saturdays anymore. It's yeah. brutal. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, Skeens was, he was fine. Um, I saw know, the numbers. I talked to a Cubs fan who works here and he told me that uh, threw, threw a lot of pitches, didn't get very far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four yeah. plus innings. Uh, he left the game allowing one run, uh, but he inherited the bullpen inherited two of them and walked those in. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so he ended up giving up three earned runs in the four plus inning, six hits, uh, two walks, seven strikeouts, um, 84 pitches, 17 of them were at least a hundred miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Murph, what I didn't understand was he, the guy's throwing one Oh two. Five of his seven strikeouts ended with a fastball over a hundred miles an hour. Why didn't it, why didn't they call for it more? I think they were looking out for his better interests. What, what, they, what are you talking about? That's how he I, gets guys out. I think that they were like, "Don't don't go crazy, your first game. Let's let's, also, let's take it slow that, a little bit." Guys don't get injured on fastballs. It's throwing the curveballs and the off speed stuff where they usually hurt their elbows, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I always, I always find that when a rookie has their first, you know, introduction in, in, in the pros, that they're really tentative with them in this day and age. Like if it was the 70s, the 80s, or in the 90s, they just would have been like, look, man, you can go, you can go eight innings, nine innings. We don't care. Just, just get the job done. But I think now people are just so antsy over, like, we don't want to hurt, hurt our prize. Right. We want, we want, you know, this, this guy is going to be here for years. Let's just. Yeah. Show, him what, show him what he has and just keep it moving. What did you think of his performance? I think it was I think it was good. I think he was I I think the Cubs batters were shocked at the speed. The consistent I mean, it, speed. It, 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 he he didn't have great command of his fastball. He did not. But it looks it looks scary coming at like there was there was a few pictures that man. came in that people were like like just kind of like nervous a little bit. Maybe maybe that's why they didn't have him throw so many fastballs. Yeah, yeah, 
I he think was so. having, you know, trouble. He was having control issues, yeah. but but if you're going outside and there, you you go out, you're trying outside and you hit inside and yeah, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think that's what <laughs> I think that's what happened. But also, I mean, listen, man, you get six, seven strikeouts. That's that's still impressive as as, as somebody coming in for the first game. That's be that's that's big league pitching, man. Like they yeah. they're waiting, they're sitting on fastballs, and it it was getting past people. So the, the kid the kid looks strong. He looks strong. Mark Pryor in his debut went six innings, gave up four hits, two earned runs, ten strikeouts, two walks, got the win. Strasburg in his debut also against the both of them Pryor and Strasburg both against the Pirates. Uh, Strasburg's uh, June eighth, two thousand ten. He got the win. Went seven innings, four hits, two earned runs, fourteen strikeouts, Jeez. and no walks. I mean, he no was wonder. he was something special uh, mm -hmm. when when he came to the big leagues. And hell, when he was spe when he was healthy, he was pretty special for the short time that he we actually got to see him pitch. What do you, what, do you think it was his natural health that failed him, or do you think they rode him a little too? much early on in his career i think they babied him too much mm. Mm. i think Could they be. babied him they babied him too much they babied him when they made him not available for them in the postseason and with the idea of we'll get back plenty of times right, right. and then they ended up getting back it was another time later uh, where strasburg <laughs> was a part of it but I think the way that they babied him, he never could go a full season. And it's because yeah. they never allowed him to. And 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 just the arm was just a disaster. So but I, I yeah, I, I I think they they screwed him up. Um <laughs> but Skeens, uh it was it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. The excitement in the ballpark was great. Uh he's another young, great player, uh, you hope, in major league baseball. I, it made me start thinking of the most anticipated debut for you. Who who was who was the most anticipated debut you can remember? Murph, do you remember a Cub making an anticipated yeah. debut? Kerry Woods, man. Kerry Woods, a great. I was one. like, I, yeah. I was waiting for him, dude. Like, and like you, you just think that it's just going to be evergreen with somebody. You just think that it's going to be. A Hall of Famer is going to be like, you know, he's going to take us to the promised land. We're going to have championships and just his whole career with the Cubs just epitomized the Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> like it is it just our whole journey of like being very up and then um, you know, but yeah, I just, that first pitch, man, everybody in Chicago was like, it was, I remember it made uh, the evening news, like they started off with it. Like it's, yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Lang, I don't have a pitcher, but the two pl players that came to mind for me, um, more recently it was Acuna because okay. we, you know, watch him come up through the minors and, you know, the last now, what, five, 10 years, like there's so much coverage of the guys in the minor leagues, you know, before that it was a lot harder to like kind of track these guys and keep up with their stats and all that, uh, before right. like the social media age. But the the other guy who really to me I was really excited to see was um, Jason Hayward, yeah, because hmm. he and Freddie Freeman were in the minors together and like coming through the minors and you kept hearing like oh when these guys get get to the majors it's going to be incredible and then uh, when when Hayward made his debut on opening day I remember he hit like a, a bomb yeah his bomb, first yeah. at bat and everybody went crazy it was a national game it was on ESPN I think yep. and it was. Or like, or you were, for all the expectations, you were like, "Well, he couldn't, he couldn't have topped that." Yeah, um, I guess it turned out Freeman just, turned out to be the better player, but or yeah. have the longer career. But I guess there was just so much talk about about Hayward because I remember Jason Hayward, and I remember being kind of fired up to watch him play and to see, you know, who is this guy and can he be a star? And, and I remember him hitting that home run in that first hit bat, but yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. guess it, I guess it was pretty, it, that was a pretty publicized one. He, he was, yeah. must've been a huge yeah. prospect. He was well, like in, there was that year in spring training where he was hit. I, it might've been the year before that he was hitting all these bombs and there was all these photos. It was like, as social media was kind of starting and he, he was kept knocking out car windows in the outfield. Yes. Um, I, yeah. from the Braves yeah. place at <laughs> Disney world. Um, and I actually went to that spring training. I was working on the book I wrote about being a Braves fan. And I saw him hit one day in the cage 
And I know it, there's like this trope of like, oh, you know, this guy sounds different coming off his bat, but it, it did sound louder coming off his bat. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, being able to like stand there and watch him hit from right up close, I was like, oh man, like we get, we got to get this guy to the majors. Come on. And the Braves weren't very good. So it was yeah. kind of like, just get him up there. And now, I, 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 I remember the buzz surrounding him because you remember there was a, a lot of talk that we needed more black baseball players. And Damn. The dirt was, you know, it's it like dwindling and he's going to be like. The and he's from, he was from Atlanta. He was yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, so there's a like, lot of just so yeah. much about him. Like, you know, he's going to be the next great black baseball player. He's going to rejuvenize the sport. And first few years, he, he was great. He was. Like, yeah. was His was last like, few yeah. years have been great. Yeah, like I, I he's he has the most maddening career. Like you, you think that he was a bust, and then you look at yeah. his numbers. I mean, we're talking about like he's dead. He's still on. He's still playing. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's still playing. I mean, he's, he's, he's yeah. playing well, he's and he plays well. well. The Dodgers yeah. can't stop signing him um, yeah. year after year. Yeah. So and, he and he's a, he performing. Has, he's, he's had a good career, and I think people need to give him his props in terms of being just being able to stick around. Man, it's hard mm -hmm. to be. It's just hard to be a baseball player, man. It's just the the, the years, the the number of games. Like this dude is just he's still here and he's still he still he was a terrible cardinal. Just terrible. Oh no, he I mean, just I mean, I, the best I, I thing about his cardinal years were yeah. the only thing you could say about him was, well, he's still a really good defensively and he's a good good base runner. And was he was, like, was, was he a glover mm. when he was there with you guys? Did he did he get any gold gloves? I don't think so. No. No. That's crazy. With the Cardinals? That's, that's usually no. what he would able able to do. He would get you some gloves. Are you yeah. looking up Jason Hayward? No, I was actually looking up his oh. brother because uh, he has a younger brother, Jacob Hayward, who uh, last year was a coach for the Giants, hmm. like a, a one of the, a rookie ball manager for the Giants. Um, and I was just seeing if he was still doing that. I, I don't know exactly what he's doing this year. He's 27 years old last year, and he was managing a rookie ball for the Giants, which is kind of cool. Maybe they kill go along that path. Yeah. But, geez. All right. Uh, a couple of things I learned this week. Uh, one, the gambling scandal. You remember the gambling scandal with uh, the former interpreter of the Dodgers, uh, Shohei Epi. Otani Epe. Uh, it's being made into a television series. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Lionsgate Television has put a series focused on Otani's ex-interpreter Epe Mizuhana, uh, Miz I'm sorry, Mizuhara, into early development, uh, according to uh, Joe Otterson of Variety Magazine. There's no writer or network attached to the project as of yet, but we're we're making we're making a series. Oh, I'm I'm. Are you I in? Pop I got the popcorn, baby. I'm there. <laughs> Brought to you by FanDuel. Yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see the translations, like the translation bar when it goes, because you know they're not going to have them speaking English. Just no, they should do. There, they got to do the whole thing in English. They got it's oh, got to be just Japanese all the way, man. Just, no, just, no, just, do it in English, it. and then you know, <laughs> which would make it like one of those movies where they, you know, it's set in some far flung country, but they speak English the whole time. Right. <laughs> would, like, if they're going for an, uh, an English speaking audience, they should do it in English or. Maybe they're not going. Maybe this is like for you know the uh, Asian audiences, and maybe they'll, they'll right, do it right, in right, right. Japanese. I'm just excited to see who plays the bookie, right? Oh, I mean that that's yeah. a great that's a great role. Oh, that uh, meaty. There's a lot, yeah. lot there to sink your teeth into. Who you plays have, have, have you ever seen the cat, the bookie? Like, no, the bookie. The... no. Does he look I thought, like you, I thought you meant the uh, the translator. Who plays the no. translator? That's the guy who's. Oh like, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. That's a million people that can do that. Yeah. Um, the bookie, no, I haven't seen him. Yeah, nobody's seen him. But I, that's I think why he was, one, he was somehow to... involved with the uh, Real Housewives, though. No, <laughs> Honestly, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's like, he's got some connection to the to one of the Real Housewives franchises. That's crazy. Oh, nice. All right, and then uh, you know we mentioned Tony Gwynn on the show last week, and yeah. every once in a while I see these crazy Tony Gwynn stats. So here's our crazy fact of the week for Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn had more four hit games, forty five four hit games. Uh, more four hit games than he had multi strikeout games. Only thirty five. Sometimes when you pull up these like Tony Gwynn stats, I just think you're lying. <laughs> They're amazing. And then and then I They're look so up different than was, anybody else. Like like what, yeah. what was he doing out there? Was he like a machine? What is Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other thing I learned this week, uh, you know, back in 2014, there was a catcher interference infraction in one of every 810 games. One in eight hundred ten games. 
uh let's go in 2017 it went all the way down to 540 games one in 540 games Mm -hmm. uh in 2019 it actually went down to one in every 81 games Hmm. that's interesting in 2024 it's one every 32 games i mentioned this because wilson Contreras broke his arm this week yeah oh man and the, the, the news that was, that was on that alley's fault because the Cardinals wanted them to move up in the batter's box. Yeah. When you've seen catcher's interference, you've seen it hit the tip of the glove, mm-hmm. maybe even in a bad situation, the top of the hand. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that too. Have or the you helmet. Seen it? Every once in a while, you'll see it like scrape on the, the back top swing. Of the helmet. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Back, back swing. Back. Yeah. But on the front swing, have you ever seen a guy break his forearm? No, he was too far up in that bat- batter's box, fish. Maybe that's Holy also the batter's smokes. moving back because the the pitchers are throwing harder than ever. But Move it looked back. like he was. It looked like Lang. It looked like he was standing his ground. Like usually, it looked like either Contreras was trying to 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 kind of uh, mark going the pitch. to try and go get it. Yeah, he was trying to get it, or he was just trying to, you know. Well, framing you know, pitches is a whole other discussion. Well, we that's have. that's the reason why this is happening more because apparently the theory is if you move up in the catcher's box, you can steal more low pitches. Right, and frame them better. Well, my yeah, that was why I suggested the. I thought maybe batters are moving back too because they're getting which more you, which they might be. I mean, you might that might that could be correct. Some of them certainly do because of that lane. I was actually thinking about this the other day because I've told you guys Will Smith is the worst at like trying to frame every single pitch. Right. It'll be two feet outside and he'll try to yank it back and get the call. Like he does it every single pitch. Now seeing like you know like in the NBA you can give warnings for flopping. Like what if we could give warnings for framing? Mm. Framing. Yeah, like if the catcher a, tries to frame it too much, and you're like, "All right, that that's I a mean, warning." Next time, for those watching it's a, on it's video, a it's a it's a or very a simple it's a very simple thing that you do. Coaching you just younger players. It's yes. Here's your glove, and yep. it's here, 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 yep, here, here. Yeah, you just catch and move the wrist. Yeah, these guys are going. <laughs> right, right, I mean, they're, yeah. they're moving their whole damn arms trying to frame these pitches i've seen yeah. people reach out to here like right above the, the strike zone and try to get a uh a, 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 a top edge strike yeah. zone probably Will think, Smith. yeah and i think <laughs> sometimes that has to do with the the caliber of, of umps that's in the back like if yeah. you if might... you have a if you have a hernandez back there you're trying to frame everything because you just don't want to you know yeah, you need to leave the chance because that maybe the robot umps will take care of this. Yeah, Lang, I'm I'm really pushing towards your thoughts on that. I'm really pushing towards your opinion on that. I, I really think that that everywhere else it. should be, you know, umps should have leeway. Yeah, batter's box should be straight up robot. I agree, straight up robot because because I'm just seeing too much. Like I, I was fish, I was infuriated watching the, the Cubs game because. Both sides, on both sides, there was pitches that was just far outside, mm-hmm. like far outside, and they were just calling strikes. Like, come on, man. Like, you, you... Well, Acuna had the bat taken out of his hands the other night because mm-hmm. of a, a, a bad pitch, a bad call, a strike that was outside the zone. It, it's, I don't know, you, you, see, you see it a lot more. The problem is, like with the Cardinals, um, their batters get upset at calls that are actually right down the middle. <laughs> Cardinals went one and sometimes Cardinals went one and five this week. Um, they've lost seven of their last eight. They were swept in two games by the Mets. They lost three of four at Milwaukee. Sonny Gray got lit up. Lance Lynn beat up. Goldie hit his third home run. That was good. Uh, and Ollie got kicked out of the game. I saw that, uh, which was which was great. And and he he pretty much admitted after the game. He said the umpires are great umpires. He said you know he he needed to spark the team. The Cardinals in the first three innings had to use both challenges because of out calls on the base paths, and they were right on both of them. And they won. Didn't they win the tra- challenge? That yeah, they, got, they, got they, they out won. Of, right? They won both challenges. Yeah. And as the umpires walking by home plate, Ali just said, "You screwed that up." He didn't say "screwed that up." He said, right. "You screwed up the call again." And, and the umpire looked at him like, "What?" <laughs> and Ali just went off. 
and gets thrown out of the game. And it's the old spark the club. And look at the Cardinals. They come back and they beat the Brewers for the first time in eight games and beat the Brewers four to three. And uh, Ollie may have sparked the team and may have uh, may have saved his job and may have uh, led this team to to the to the right path of getting hot at the right time. A lot of that was the that was the only game they won last week. The only game they won last week, yes. Yeah. Um, here's what so happened. So maybe he last just week. needs to do that every game. Yeah. Wilson Contreras is out six to eight weeks with a broken forearm. Steven Matt's got an injection is in his back. He shut down from throwing for at least a week. Jordan Walker, who was sent down to Triple A, Triple A, had an interview that he did, and he basically said, "Well, last year they wanted me to hit the ball more in the air." but I think it really screwed up my swing. So I'm down here now just trying to get back to what I was doing. Mm. As I told you, sometimes when coaches tell you, Hey, you got to take a step back to go too forward. They're wrong. Mm. My coach was wrong in high school <laughs> <laughs> and the Cardinals were wrong in this situation. They screwed the guy up. All right. Here are a couple of quotes. Tell me what this team sounds like. Nolan Arenado said, I've got to get on base more, driving more runs. I know when I say that it might be adding more pressure, but I expect myself to do a better job all the way around and help these guys out. Lance Lynn said, we need to take a deep breath and relax. Ali Marmel, we're not hitting. Bottom line, at the end of the day, we're not putting up enough runs. We're not stringing together quality at bats. Some guys are trying to do too much. It's been a struggle. And then he says, I'll wake up in the morning. I'll figure out a way to continue to have the teams back and encourage them through a real shitty time. If you guys want to get on somebody, get on me, but I'm going to continue to support the hell out of that group. Oh, he's doing the old school Casey Stengel thing. It sounds like a manager is about to be fired. That's what, but he's, he's doing that. Oh man. Like put the pressure on me. My guy, he's trying to rally the troops. And there were some rumors thrown out last week that he's got two weeks to turn it around. Well, he's not going to turn it around. So, I mean, yeah. just two weeks though. That's crazy. Oh, uh, uh, so two uh, weeks. Just, he started, two weeks. At least wait in the middle of, the middle of the he started one and six. So started yeah. But the guy <laughs> ejected and fired the team up. Lang, yeah. he fired the team up with the ejection yesterday, but it, it's a, uh, what's really sad is I, I watched the team play this week and I thought to myself, we just signed Sonny Gray to this three-year contract. Do we have to trade him? I mean, mm. he'd probably get more than anybody else on your team, yes. on your roster. Maybe somebody some prospects. Would, somebody would love to have him. I, I, I think Goldsmith might get some. Players. I'll take him. Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt. No, we don't want a Goldschmidt. Arenado. Mm. Yeah, you don't need him. Maybe defense. But yeah, but you got Austin Riley. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the Braves. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, it's bad for the Cardinals right now. And it just scares me that that's the way that we're going again. Of It's going to be a rebuild type of thing. And the problem is the Cardinals don't have a lot of assets. You know, Goldschmidt's hitting a buck 80. Arenado's not hitting the ball out of the park. Um Arenado feels like one of those guys that a new change of scenery might just spark the hell out of him though. Cause he's still hitting the ball hard Goldschmidt. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the deal is with Goldschmidt, but sure. to think of Goldschmidt, Arenado, and even Sonny Gray being gone would just be devastating. What an even absolute Sonny Gray. You guys, he's been on your team for like two weeks and he's the best pitcher we have. We've maybe had in 20 years. Mm. And uh, that's, saying, that's saying a lot. Yes. And uh, to see it all kind of go to the crapper is, it's sad. But, 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 again, the Cardinals have won their last game. And yep. uh, and Ali got them fired up. And now they head to play the Angels. Boy, the only thing I, I love, we talked about it last week, watching West Coast baseball. And the Cardinals are in Anaheim this week. So it'll be late night starts for the Cardinals, the Angels. But watching two really crappy teams late night baseball <laughs> might be the perfect remedy for sleeping this week. Yeah, those are the ones watching that like these two. make you doze off on the couch. Oh, God. Awful. All right, Lang. Braves. Four in one week. Swept the Red Sox in two and won two or three at the Mets. Yeah. Yeah, Riley got hurt last night. That's why I said that about Austin Riley. We don't – they they – I don't know. They said I mean, he had how, a, how, uh, how serious is it? What, what did they say? A, a, a side soreness in his side, which always makes you terrified of the oblique. The um, oblique, oh, the dreaded oblique. So who knows? They said it was precautionary. 
So I don't know. I mean, you know, Sean Murphy hurt his oblique on opening day and he's still not back. So, right. uh, and they were saying he might be a couple weeks away still. So who knows, but I, hopefully Austin Riley's okay. Cause he was the one guy who's actually started to kind of get it going recently. Cunha Olsen, those guys are still scuffling and, uh, and haven't been as, as good as they were um, last year. Chris sale went six scoreless, 10 strikeouts. He's five and one against Boston. He's been awesome. Sale's been awesome. Uh, Max Fried has been awesome. Ronaldo Lopez has been awesome. Yeah. Max Fried uh, seven, no hit innings against yeah. the Mets. I saw some stats today. We've had like 20 games in a row now where we've scored four runs or less or something like that. Um, so the offense has not been as like, you know, dominant as it once was. Uh, Cunha had a little stretch last week. He was like six for 12. And then he, I think he went three for 23 over the weekend. Um, so like he's he kind of regressed, got picked off first twice last night, although <laughs> arguably both of them were balks, but whatever. Um, not a great, not a great weekend for Acuna. And, uh, what you, and then, what, what, what you thought about the walk-off thing? Well, I, th- we shouldn't have had mentor pitching. I mean, I, I understand they they had had some guys who were shut down last night and wouldn't pitch, including our closer Iglesias, um, and Jimenez, who, who was pretty good. But as soon as Mentor came in to close the game, I texted my friend Dave and I was like, "Hey, Mentor's gonna blow this," and he <laughs> and he and he was like, uh, "I said he's just not built for this stuff." And then he blew it. And then David O'Brien from the Athletic tweeted this morning. I sent this to Dave. Uh, AJ Mentor in non-safe situations this year: twelve appearances, one point six nine ERA, point one six two opponent average. Uh, 0.549 opponent OPS, two home runs allowed in 11 innings. Mm. Mentor, mentor in save situations, eight appearances. This must be career. Uh, eight appearances, 7.50 ERA, Jeez. 261 opponent average, 944 opponent OPS, three home runs allowed in six innings pitch. He's 0 for 2 with three blown saves and three opportunities. So what you're so, saying, he's a blinking, he's a blinking night neon sign just coming out there. Like, don't yeah, send this guy out there. He's not built to be a closer. He's built to it's be a, a trend. A, he's an elite setup, man. But like, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, he's the one who gave up the walk-off against Seattle a couple weeks ago. And to have him come out there again last night and try it again, and he gave up a walk-off again. So I don't know. At some point, maybe they'll just realize, hey, let's just try somebody else. Uh, Glacius got his 200th save. That he's the fifth active pitcher and 54th all time with uh, 200 saves. How he's great. That? He actually blew the. We had a no hitter going the other night with Free against the Mets, and and Iglesias is the one who gave up the hit to to ruin the no hitter, the combined no hitter. Yeah. Um. But uh. But Iglesias has been so good. He's he doesn't really get the the claim. A lot of those, you know, I guess there's not a lot of like big name closers anymore. But um. When he doesn't Jansen, get the acclaim that like a Craig Kimbrell gets. No, but when like Jansen used to come in, I was terrified. And when Iglesias comes in, I feel pretty confident. Like I'm like, all right, this guy, he's he's going to be yeah. fine. Why don't you yeah. why don't you send some of that confidence over to us for our bullpen? We, we'll <laughs> talk about that a little later. Yeah. Chris Sale, the only Braves pitcher in history to produce 50 or more Ks and post an ERA under three through his first seven starts with the franchise. How about that? Just hope he stays healthy. Yeah, and Max Fried, the first pitcher to pitch six plus innings and finish with no hits allowed twice in a span of three appearances since Johnny Vandermeer did it with his back-to-back no hitters in 1938. How about that? You know, the last uh, last Braves pitcher with a no hitter? It was a combined one. Kent Merker. Kent Merker. I like that one. There's yeah, a name for I remember the 90s. that one. Yeah, um, I remember because there was a baseball card. I remember having the baseball card of Kent Merker and mm-hmm. the combined guys who threw the no hitter. Or no, the Merker was on his own, right? No, I thought it was a combined one, but maybe not. Was that maybe the combined one against the Dodgers? I think the combined right. one. I think uh, Alejandro. What, what, what was year was that, man? It, it like ninety. Four, five, six, somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought yeah. I thought that was like in the late nineties. I might be wrong. No. All right. And then the uh the Cubbies, a three and three week. Um yeah. I I say I say you you survived Paul Skeen's day. Yes, we did. <laughs> hey, for what yeah, it's worth, Mer- Merker Merker threw the combined no hitter and the one on his own. Oh, okay. Wow. He, he did impressive. both of them. Oh, yeah. nice. 90, 94 was the single no hitter. All, All right. right. 
Uh, you won two out of three against the Buccos, and that was good because you needed to after losing two out of three to the Padres. The Padres uh, series was re- very disappointing. Um, I started panicking after that series. I, I think I think I needed the Buccos. I needed that. Um, I got a little antsy towards the end because I was making a joke about a bullpen. It's atrocious. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, we have just guys walking, folks. Be like two guys on base, two outs. You never know what's going to happen. I have to turn off the TV. I'm pacing. You know, I need a <laughs> bourbon. I'm making my old fashioned. Turn it back on. We win. Um, that was a miracle win. Hendrix, I, I, I can't call call it. I, I don't know where he got it from. I don't know what he did in the minors. I don't know what he was doing to get his his uh his pitching right. But he he came in. What was it? Five innings, fish. Uh, yeah, five innings. Uh, one run. Yeah, one run. Like it's impressive. Um, that was good can, to see. Yeah, but we got we got to make we got to make a trade for some some bullpen help, fish, because it's like. You're on a trap piece, man. You never know what's going to happen. Like, I, I, I can't sit still. Even when we have, like, a 5-3 lead or a 4-2 lead, or you just never know what's going to happen. We're, we're too good of an offensive team, too good defensively to collapse, worrying about collapsing in late innings like that. So we got we to do something. I mean, I'm, I'm glad Belly came up with the home run. Um, Wisdom game before that came up with it. Some good, a good play, offensive play. So we'll see, man. But I, I'm very nervous about this bullpen. You might, you might have to talk me down, Fish. Yeah. Morell hit his ninth home run. Bellinger, that home run, he hit six and seven this week. Michael Bush hit his seventh home run. That one was a walk off against San Diego in the win. And then the big, I mean, the big news for Chicago this year has been Shota, Imanaga, seven innings, two earned runs, eight strikeouts. He's got a 108 ERA. The Cubs have not lost uh, he got a no decision in the game but they have not lost a game that he has started this year and he's starting tonight against the braves against what has been the braves best pitcher this year in lopez so i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be great tonight that's gonna be a matchup um listen nobody i, I don't I, I credit the cub scouts because i don't cub think scouts. Anybody, I know, not right? the cub scouts no okay <laughs> the cubs <laughs> scouts because right. I don't think anyone saw this coming. They, I, the, 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 the paper on this dude was that he was a very good pitcher. Um, you couldn't get him out of the park with hits. He tended to keep everything inside. But he's right now, he's like a top three pitcher in the league right now, the way he's pitching. So I just keep it coming. Hope we can keep it coming against you guys. Um, that lineup scares me. Um, it's because it's just relentless. You know, you, you, it's not a middle three lineup. Like, oh, you're just worrying about three guys and then everybody else. So uh, I think this would be a big test for him. This is probably the biggest test of the season for him. To see what Huge he can test. Do against that lineup. Huge week for the Cubbies. Uh, 24 and 17 on the season. Uh, Dansby Swanson on the 10-day IL. But Seiya Suzuki uh, is back from the IL. So good to have him back. But now you got to get Dansby. Back in yeah, the Dan, Dan, I think I think Dansby's been. Um, I don't know what's going on with his offense, man. He's a little off and on. Was he like that with you guys? Mm-hmm. A little hot and cold sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, could, once he got going, he was good, but it, yeah. sometimes it took him a while. Yeah, it <laughs> seems like he's like he's either doing well defensively, and his offense is lacking, or his offense is kind of popping up, but then he's like makes an error. I, I don't know. Something's. I think he just needs to settle down. Maybe get get, get some time off a little bit to, to get his uh, body together. Yeah. In the National League East, the Phillies, 28-13. and 13, They're at the top. They beat San Francisco to complete a four-game sweep on Monday, then split two with Toronto, won two or three at Miami. Ranger Suarez continues to pitch. He had seven scoreless at Miami. He's 7-0 and with a 150 ERA. Four pitchers in the modern era have had a whip of 0.72 or lower over their first eight starts of a season with the team winning all eight. Three of them were dead ball era Hall of Famers, Christy Mathewson, Addie Joss, and Mordecai Brown. The other is Ranger Suarez. How about that? 
anytime you're in something with Mordecai Brown. Yeah, that's how you know. That's like the the tip that it's like some old record. If anybody's named Mordecai, yeah, three finger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mordecai three and, finger Brown. Anytime it's an Old Testament name, you know it's like a old. And when name. and when it's one of those old cookie names too, like yeah, five fish. <laughs> this person, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce Harper hit his uh, ninth home run. It was a grand slam. Schwarbs has got nine as well. Uh, behind them, you got Washington at 19 and 20, a game under 500, but they went above 500 last week for the first time since 2021. Ron Johnson, give him his flowers. Let me tell you. I mean, Ron Washington, give him his flowers. Like he's, he's working. No, no, Ron Washington is the Angels. No, he's, in, he's in the Angels. He's Angels. I thought he was over. Oh. No, Dave uh, Martinez oh, still with the Angels. Don't don't give him no. his flowers though. No, Dave Martinez still with uh, Washington above 500 first time since 2021. Who's, That's kind of defeat. Who's, That's a feat. Who's, who's their best player over in Washington? Uh, we talked about that because I I went and saw them uh, play the Dodgers a couple weeks ago when I was in okay. DC and, uh, and my friend and I were sitting there trying to figure out who's the best player. We. CJ Abrams, maybe the shortstop. I guess that's their best player. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're at 500. So good. Let me tell you something. They have been a crappy team to bet. Bet against. <laughs> oh, I'd stay away. I mean, good they're Lord. at 500. They keep winning games. I mean, every time you bet yeah. someone, you think, oh, they're playing Washington. No, -uh. don't don't do that anymore. Uh, the they're, Mets are they're at 19 and 20. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, Miami's 11 and 31. They went one and five on the week and there was a small protest asking ownership to sell the team. Wow. Yeah. Outside the stadium it's by small protest. I mean, there were like 15 people, Yeah, but they had signs and they were protesting for him to sell the team and said that they were speaking on behalf of all of the fans. Of, of course the they are. So that was all the fans. <laughs> the 15 people. That was all the fans. Yeah. Are they still selling over there? They're still making moves or what? It feels so. like they're know. going to. Because I we need to go shopping over there, man. I just see them to keep tearing down before September when the Braves play the weekend series down there because I want to go to the series in Miami and buy tickets, and I want them to be as bad as possible by the time that comes around so I can get yeah. tickets as cheap as possible on the in secondary a great location. Market. Yeah, And absolutely. the best seat as possible. And I don't know if I should do it now or wait. I think I need to wait. I think you can wait. Yeah. 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 Uh, in the central, the Milwaukee Brewers, 24 and 16, they lost two or three at Kansas city. Then won three or four against the Cardinals, uh, Reese Hoskins, uh, hitting three home runs this week. He's got nine on the season. Willie Adamas, uh, had a seventh home run, uh, ninth inning three run winner against the Cardinal or against Kansas city in that series. Uh, so the Brewers still at the top Cincinnati, they've struggled. They went one and five for a second straight week. Feels like they've been on the road this whole time, but they, they haven't, they're just, they haven't put it together last year. All the young guys on that team kind of put it together. And this year it's like, now they're kind of getting their feet wet. Now that teams have books on them and teams kind of are figuring out what they yeah. do. Um, you know, Ellie De La Cruz has still been great, but they just haven't had enough of all of those young guys like they did at the end of last year. And then Paul Skeens uh, with Pittsburgh, they're 18 and 23. In AAA this year, he faced 105 batters, struck out 45 of them, and allowed three earned runs. That was his number in AAA. All right. And now, now he's earned three earned runs and in four innings pitched in the big leagues. <laughs> in the National League West, the Dodgers are on the top spot. They had a four and two week. Uh, they're 27 and 15 on the year. They swept three against Miami. They lost two or three at San Diego. Teoscar Hernandez has 11 home runs on the season, including a grand slam at San Diego. Freddie hit his fourth. Yamamoto went eight innings pitch, two earned runs. He improved to four and one on the season as well. Max Muncy hit his ninth. Shohei, however, missed Sunday's game because he had to leave Saturday with back stiffness. Mm. The team said it's of minimal concern. All right. They're probably just giving him a rest. His interpreter said, 20 on red. <laughs> <laughs> Luis Arise had a walk-off against the Dodgers uh, for San Diego. And Colorado <laughs> Colorado won two straight games for the first time this season. They actually had a week of four and two to improve to 12 and 28 on the season. Hmm. So good for Colorado. Right, Colorado. Boy, they, they swept. 12 and 28? Who did they sweep? 
White Sox. Oh, tough, no, that's... they didn't get they didn't get swept. They won three of four. Or no, uh, no, I'm wrong. I don't know. I, oh, here it is. Swept three. Texas got swept by Colorado this week. Oh wow! In three Wouldn't games. Known that. Yeah, swept three against Colorado. That's terrible. Uh, American League action. Uh, the Yankees. They're at the top of the American League East. Or actually, they're a half game behind Baltimore at twenty-seven fifteen. Uh, they won two of three against Houston, won two of three against Tampa as well. Nestor Cortez has got off to a one and four start this season. That's not good. But Luis Gill went six scoreless innings this week. He's four and one to start the season. Uh, Juan Soto hit his ninth. Judge hit his 10th. So, all right. You ready for the Soto fact of the week? Yeah, go ahead. Bring it. In 38 games for the Yankees. Soto had 49 hits, 33 RBIs, 26 walks, nine homers, four stolen bases, with 25 wins. Since RBIs became an official stat in 1920, the only other major league player to reach all those numbers over his first 38 games of a season was Babe Ruth in 1926. Oh, oh don't do that. Soto is the Babe Ruth of oh. today's era. How about that? Baltimore, uh, they split two at Washington, then won two or three against Arizona to go to 26 and 13. Gunder Henderson, Hitting a couple homers. He's got 12 on the year. Cole Irvin had a uh, nice, impressive performance. He is four and one to start the season. And Craig Kimbrell's blown a couple of saves, and they don't know what to do with him. Go figure. <laughs> what are the options? They don't really have a lot of Mason Miller. Do. Yeah. What is he? What is he at, Lane, in wins right now? I don't know. Kimbrell. Oh, Kimbrell in saves? Yeah. I don't know. In saves. It's got to be around it's 200. Be over, like, oh, yeah, it's it's got to be over 200. Oh yeah, it's interesting. I think I thought he got the three hundred. Did Although he get the three hundred? I thought he did, but I might be wrong. Yeah, let's see. Oops, because I, I know nice. Kenley did. Um, didn't Kenley get the three hundred? Wasn't that his big plateau that he hit? Because because three hundred that's like the that's like the new magic. Hold number, on, I'm right? looking up. Uh, Kimbrel has saves four hundred and twenty five. Four hundred and twenty five. That's what it says. Wow. 425 saves, uh, 56 so blown saves. Then Kenley's got to be over 400. <laughs> I don't know. Because um, I thought he was like the leader. Kenley Jansen. Yeah, that's a crazy stat. And that puts a lot of things in perspective because you don't find anybody saying that Kimberly should be. Kenley is 427. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's look at all time saves leaders. Um, saves. Uh, active like save Lee leaders. Those guys, it was crazy. Jansen's the active saves leader, four twenty-seven. Kimbrel four twenty-five. Aroldis Chapman's third with three hundred and twenty-two. Then Edwin Diaz is fourth with two hundred and ten, and then Iglesias is fifth with two hundred. Wow. Hmm. Even a guy like Josh Hader has uh, one hundred and seventy. Only fifty-four have uh, over two hundred. So there's yeah. that number. All right. Um, all right. In the American League Central, Cleveland, they're still at the top. Um, they won two or three against Detroit, uh, and th lost three or four at the White Sox. Good job, Cleveland. How do you lose three or four at the White Sox? That is when you're that first place. Great. That's embarrassing, man. They had new Minnesota uniforms. Do you see their city uniforms? Yeah, they're all right. They're all right. I like them. I like uh, them. Minnesota and Kansas City are both uh, a half game back in the division. Minnesota's won 17 of their last 20 games. Ryan Jeffers has nine home runs on the season. Carlos Santana hit his fifth, sixth, and seventh in a tr in a series win against Toronto. Kansas City, meanwhile, Bobby Witt Jr. Did you see, hit his uh, fifth homer. One of those Santana home runs, they threw the summer sausage. Oh no! Out, up in the air, out on the field, and it hit him in the head. <laughs> he didn't see it coming. He was running to the dugout, and they threw the sausage way up in the air, and it conked him right in the head. So then, the, but then it when didn't he open, did it? No, I didn't. I don't know, but he still had his helmet on, so it like didn't hurt him. Right. But then the next time he came up, he hit the he. That was the game he hit the three home runs. I guess the right. next time he comes right. up, he hit another one. And that time they like made sure they had eye contact with him and stuff, and then they lobbed it up to him, and he, he caught it the next time. But anyway, <laughs> the sausage celebration. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City had a five and two week. They won two or three against Milwaukee and three or four at the Angels. Michael Waka finally had a good performance, and Seth Lugo. Uh, now eight innings pitched, one earned run, twelve strikeouts. He's now six and one to start the season, which is pretty unbelievable. Um, 
the AL West is kind of weak. Seattle's a yes. half game up. They're 22 and 19. They lost three of four at Minnesota, but then one, two or three against Oakland. Texas is only 22 and 20. They won three of four at Oakland and then got swept three at Colorado. That's pretty pathetic. How about the angel story? The angels now 15 and 26. Mike Trout decided that having surgery to repair his torn meniscus in his knee was a better alternative than postponing the procedure and being a designated hitter the rest of the season. I saw that. You wanted thoughts? to play in the field. I mean, I don't know. I keep telling you guys he should just hang it up and just DH. I don't know why he keeps doing well, he this. He doesn't want stuff. to. He had the surgery, so he doesn't have to just DH. Oh, come on, man. I mean, we He's already we, we, you've got you got a, a, a whole closet full of like gold gloves. We know how great you are defensively. Mm. Now it's time for you to go win. Go somewhere, man. Yeah. Like yes, you you're staying with the Angels. It's just Maybe he know. didn't. Maybe he had the surgery so he can go somewhere, because you can't trade somebody with a messed up meniscus, right? I would guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I doubt it. I don't know if he hasn't gone somewhere by now. My God. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's never going anywhere, fish. Yeah, I would think. Why would he go now? Uh, Houston's off to a fifteen and twenty-five start. Good news is Renell Blanco is four and zero on the season. You know, he threw a no hitter earlier this mm. year, and he's four and zero on the year four of their 15 wins. However, uh, Astros general manager, Dana Brown said he can't envision being a seller at the trade deadline, despite the shocking start to the season. He said, this ball club is too good. We have a really good rotation. We have a really good bullpen. Our bats are a little bit off to a slow start. I think the production's coming. I think our guys are too professional. They're too good of players. I can't predict any scenario where we become sellers. I think this team is too good. So that means they're going to sell. <laughs> right it's like the vote of confidence right <laughs> and then the guy gets fired two weeks later yeah he's just trying too hard yeah you know yeah i i don't know i i mean i think he's right i think the astros are too good but at some point things just kind of run out and maybe it's run out mm. i mean some people some people are complaining the astros fans are complaining they want a new manager and they want him right now mm. go, let's go get terry francona and win a world series <laughs> and and get rid of this guy uh so they're putting a lot of blame there that dusty's being gone but I, I don't know man at some point you have to realize okay you don't want to wait till it's too late like the cardinals <laughs> <laughs> just a little advice yeah all right uh some of our favorites this week shohei four hits four walks two rbis a double a homer two stolen bases his average is 352. He went down 12 points this week, and then he's got the tight back and uh, yeah. missed, missed a day. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, six hits, a double, a homer, two RBIs, two stolen bases. He went down six points to 255. We had a lot of guys. Yeah. None of our guys really – only one guy had a really good week. Ellie De La Cruz, not him. Five hits, home run, two RBIs, but he did have six stolen bases. He's got 25 now on the season. It's awesome. Uh, on pace for 100. His average went down nine points to 262. O'Neill Cruz, six game hit streak. He had eight hits, three doubles, two homers, five RBIs. His average went up 23 points Jeez. to 265. That'll work. Yeah. Bobby Witt Jr., six hits, a double, a homer, two RBIs, four stolen bases. He's got 15 now on the season. He's hitting 305. He went down 14 points to 305 this week. Mm. And then uh, Mason Miller. My guy. He only pitched two innings, but he struck out four. <laughs> the last time he allowed a walk or a run was March 30th. S <laughs> since then, 15 and a third, 32 strikeouts. That's insane. I love it. 32 strikeouts. He's allowed one hit in his last 10 games. But the news this week, the A's are willing to trade Miller for the right price. Let's get him. Somebody go get him. Oakland is not ruling out a future trade of Mason Miller, who's already drawing interest from contenders, according to Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic. However, the team's asking price for Miller is quite high, and no suitor has come even close to meeting it, apparently. Yeah, but they're, they're, their price always comes down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, I was about, they I, always I, trade the guys. You, you, beat, you beat me to it. They're, they're going to they're gonna come down on it. A team likely would need to give up a young player of comparable ability or a substantial package of multiple youngsters who could be part of the A's future. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, B- Baltimore, the first name that comes up is Jackson Holiday, the number one pick in the draft. And Baltimore is like, well, he's off the list. And Oakland's like, well, Mason Miller's off the list. Yeah. Let's see what you do. Also, we've seen Jackson Holiday not be great in the majors. And we've seen yeah, Mason yeah, Miller I be mean, really good in the majors. So I don't know. Maybe. I mean, we can we offer them product. Pete Crow Armstrong or somebody like that and maybe some other picks. But I, they got to come down on that because I, cause they're not in a position of power. You know, yeah. people are just going to have to wait them out. People are going to smoke. They're, they're going to smoke them out. They're going to wait them out. Can the Cubs do it? Will the Cubs do it? I want them to. They, we Would should. They we should be. We should be in every discussion when it comes to pitching. I want like, the I don't care what type of. Yeah, Braves. Uh, this is the. This is like when the Braves double down and go get like you know like they already had Darno and they go get Sean Murphy or that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> who who we should point out they got from the A's. Right. Or when they decided to let Freddie Freeman go and they went and got Matt Olson, who we should point out, they went and got from the A's. So perhaps there's a little pipeline here. There's, a, there's an A's pipeline going on. That's what you're trying to tell me. The Oakland yeah. to Atlanta pipeline. Let's keep it growing. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, all right. Uh, this week on deck, we got the Braves uh, hosting the Cubs for three. Uh, and then the Braves will have San Diego for three. The Cubs, meanwhile, then will go uh, host the Pittsburgh Pirates for four games. So you got the Buccos. You're going to get Paul Skeens again. I, that, that dude scares me. I mean, either he's, either he's going to strike you out or he's going to hit you in the head, either one. And if he's going to do that, that's going to hurt real bad. Yeah. Uh, Cardinals got three in Los Angeles against the Angels and then three at home against the Boston Red Sox. What you think, Fish? Mm. Red Sox aren't very good. No, better than the Cardinals. Um, the hope is the angels get... aren't very good. You guys, my do... hope, my hope, you should, be able, you should and... be able to sweep, you should be able to sweep the angels, fish. Oh, hell, sweep <laughs> the angels. Come on, I think you guys should have like a we're not even close to 500, four and two week, three and three. I'm hoping, okay. I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you three and three, all right. Uh, Cleveland's at Texas for three games. Um, Kansas City's at Seattle for three games this week. Uh, the Yankees are at Minnesota for three this uh, this week as well. And then a couple of big ones this weekend. Seattle at Baltimore for three over the weekend. And Minnesota will take on Cleveland mm. at Jacobs Field for three games in Cleveland, Ohio over the weekend for first place in the Central Division. So good series there as well. My betting for the Cardinals this week, I went four and two. I'm now 23 and 17 on the season betting the Cardinals. I, for the second year in a row, have a better record than the Cardinals uh, betting the Cardinals. So go me. That's, I, I think you can seek solace in that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying anything, man. I know anything after they trade my favorite pitcher, Sonny Gray. It's going to be sad. It's going to be what's, real sad. seriously though, fish. What's what's Goldsmith's problem? What's going on? With him? You think he's just tired? I think he's, he's just gotten just, old, and he's, he's like he's gotten old. Like you know, like those big dudes, they start breaking down eventually. I think right? that's I think that's it. Because um, I'm like I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I keep I thinking he could break out of it, but even when he's hitting the ball hard, he's not hitting with a lot of power. He did hit a home run yesterday, so. Maybe that one, barely, that one barely got out, didn't it? I know, like, but Ali yeah. Spark may have gotten him going. So oh, okay, maybe that's uh, maybe that's the deal. The Ali Spark. I should have the Cardinals going five and one this week. That's what there I should go. have. Them he going. should get thrown out of every game, and they'll Give go undefeated. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Infield Fly. Thanks for joining us uh, here to talk of baseball with you about uh, what happened in the last week, what's coming up this week, and. What's going on uh, around Major League Baseball? For Keith Murphy, for Lang Whitaker, I'm Rob Fisher. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week here on Infield Fly on Grind City Media.